In our last episode, we built and magnetized the Imperial Knight Titan, and now we're going to move on to the painting. And we're going to be spending a lot of time in the airbrush booth, and uh, starting off with a good coat of Leho Black Primer. And then once the black primer is dry, we apply white primer over it. And the reason for that is there's going to be a lot of red and white on this bottle. And airbrushing red and white onto a white undercoat as opposed to a black undercoat is a lot easier. So leaving the black in uh, any areas that are going to be paint metallic and then white on the larger panels. And don't have to be super precise here. A little bit of black around the edges will give a little extra shade to the red and white and that's totally fine. Painting the metallics first and going over uh, all the well metal bits with a mix of Leho Model Air gun metal mixed with a little bit of chrome. And the Vallejo Model Air metallics have aluminum powder as their, uh, that's what gives them their metallic sheen, uh, very fine grain powder and so it works extremely well through an airbrush and it it's just gives a very good natural lovely look to it. The main color of the model is Vallejo model color 926 red mixed in with a little bit of flat red and I really do not like using Vallejo model colors through my airbrush because they are extremely difficult to get thinned just right. Either they're too thick and don't go through or they're too thin and they go through like water. Um, so they're just a pain, but I needed something that I can brush on later because there would be certain parts of the model that I need to paint by hand. So uh, I went with the Vallejo. And then I did a little bit of highlighting with just straight flat red. Uh, on any of the large panels, the center of the panels, leaving uh, a little bit of a little bit of darker line around the panel lines. Now on to shading the metal. After the metallic paint was dry, I coated it with a light coat of Pledge with Future Shine to protect the paint. And uh, those of you who watch a lot of my videos know I use the MIG enamel washes in the AK Interactive enamel washes quite a lot. And I thought, what would happen if I used them through an airbrush? And that's what I did. This is a mix of AK Interactive uh, brown blue wash mixed in with about an equal amount of AK Inter Interactive streaking grime. And I'm just airbrushing it over the entire uh, surface of the metal. And it actually worked out pretty well. It has a benefit uh, above Putting, applying it by brush because by brush it tends to pool and it takes a really long time to dry. Using it through airbrush you don't have to thin it, it goes right through and you get a nice even coat and also because it's being uh, aerated on essentially it also dries a lot faster so in about an hour it was ready to take off. So then about an hour later here we are back at the desk just using an old t-shirt and you can see how the wash comes right off. Uh, not even using any enamel thinner or odorless thinner to take it off right now. Um, I did use some in a few places where I didn't get a good coat of pledge where it was sticking to the paint. But um, it, it, works, it worked really well. I'm very satisfied with the results. You can see I got a nice kind of bluish brown tone to the metal now. and. Wherever I'm rubbing it off, it's uh, the sheen's coming back to the original metallic. Uh, a little experiment that worked extremely well. And then back to the airbrush booth, I have some of the panels taped off, and the other half I'm painting white. Went with Tamiya colors because they tend to cover better. And started off with some Tamiya. Uh, buff mixed with a little bit of white and then when that was dry I used straight white on the center of the panels. And then we're back at the desk. I need to paint the trim around all the panels and uh, but first I need to cover all the areas I've already painted and I'm using some Humbrol Mask All for this. 
It is a latex-based mask. However, it does have something different in it. This is uh, the first time I've used it, uh, but it flows much better than just uh, standard liquid latex, which I've used in the past, which uh, is kind of difficult to work with. This works very well. And uh, anyway, trying to concentrate, trying to keep it as clean as possible, um, and uh, leaving the trim exposed so we can paint the gold. And then back at the booth once again, as you can see, I did use tape for the larger surface areas that needed protection, and undercoated first with some Vallejo model color English uniforms, color similar to brown to help uh, the gold to cover better. And for the gold, I used Army Painter Greedy Gold. Now, previously, I mentioned how well and lovely the Vallejo Air Metallics work. Uh, this is an example of a metallic not working well. The metallic particles in the paint are fairly thick and it just did not work well through an airbrush. Uh, it looked very blotchy and I had to do about three separate coats to get it to cover, um, which is not a good idea when you're masking because the thicker the paint is when you pull it off, the more likely it is to pull off where you don't want it. And then back at the desk to take off the mask all. If you embed some tape into it, it makes it really easy to take off. Otherwise, you can use um, the end of a pencil, the eraser of a pencil. It takes it off pretty well. And then just use a toothbrush to take care of any of the little bits trapped in the corners. Then at this point, I went around and painted all the areas that I could not paint with the airbrush. I also went back and fixed any errors that needed to be fixing. The The mask wasn't perfect. I missed a few spots and so I went back and fixed that. But uh, essentially this stage right here is painting all the extra little details on the model. And because it worked so well the first time, I went back to the AK Interactive enamel wash through the airbrush to shade the rest of the model. Uh, first undercoated everything again with Pledge with Future Shine to protect the underlying paint. And then I used a 50-50 mix of AK Interactive Streaking Grime mixed with a little bit of, uh, or excuse me, an equal amount of Rust Streaks. And this is going over everything, well, let me explain. It's going over everything except for the steel metal bits. It's going over the white, the red, and the gold because brown will shade all three of those colors. Uh, it's a little dark for the white, but I did want to bring the white down. I wanted to dirty it up a little bit. Um, I did. I tried to avoid putting it on the steel metal. Um, however, I did spray a little bit of it in few of the re in few of the recesses, and it actually was a really nice color. It's a good mixture if you want dirty metal. This streaking grime rust streak mix, um, and it looks really good. If you want it, like I said, if you want streaking. Uh, Grimy metal, really, you know, worn metal, try that mix because it was very impressive. And then, as before, removing the wash uh, using just an old t shirt. Um, try and go for an up and down pattern so you get a nice streaking, gravity streaking effect to it. And uh, the brown, it darkened the white and it shaded it. It shaded the red and it shaded the gold and it gives a good worn look to everything and so it worked out perfectly. <clears throat> After letting the enamel dry overnight, gave the model a couple coats of Pledge with Future Shine in preparation for the decals. And I wanted a diamond pattern. I couldn't find one and so I made my own with decal printing paper and uh, Photoshop. And uh, I just cut a roughly the shape here as you can see um, I didn't cut it tried to cut it exactly to the shape of the shoulder pad because that would have been nigh impossible so I'm going to apply it and then let it dry for about 10 minutes and then go around the edges with a very sharp hobby knife to cut it to form and uh, you can see I'm struggling a bit here because I'm trying to apply a giant decal to a round surface it was very difficult and took a lot of micro saw and cutting air bubbles to get it to fit I did try on the other shoulder pad, I cut it in half first, which made it easier to apply. However, then the 
diamond pattern did not line up exactly because of the curved surface. However, eventually I got them both down and proceeded to decal the rest of the model. All the decals are applied and then I gave the model two coats of Pledge with Future Shine to seal them down and painting the base now. And um, I forget exactly what browns I used, uh, chocolate brown in English uniform, I believe, and um, cold gray and beige for the rocks. But I'm um, adding a little bit of variation now with some MIGS dark wash, just applying it here and there and uh, trying to get a blotchy pattern on the rocks using a, a Q-tip wherever necessary. I then added a little bit more weathering with the AK Interactive Streaking Grime. Uh, not too much because it was already looking pretty dark and weathered with all the washes I used on it through the airbrush. So just a little bit of uh, streaks here and there with the liner brush and then I cleaned them up and uh, sharpened them up with the, uh, the Q-tip. Finally, after flat coating and adding stat static grass to the model, I'm dry brushing some different colors onto the static grass. Um, just a few different shades of yellow, and I'm kind of doing this, I threw this in just because a lot of people don't realize that you can paint static grass, just dry brush it, and it adds some color variation to it, which is necessary uh, with such a huge base. So a little bit of desert yellow here, a little bit of off-white there and just adds a bit more variation to it. And there we are. Titan is done and it is really big. Uh, so big it's uh, too big for my backdrop. So uh, it's a fun model to paint. I enjoyed it actually. I'm really happy how the enamel washes through the airbrush came out. And uh, it's pretty colorful. I did have a, I have an issue with the banner between the legs. I wasn't sure what to do with it. I didn't want to use the checkerboard, the diamond pattern again, because I thought it would be too much. So uh, I may pull that out. That's just temporary glued in. We will see. And then here we are with the other arm attached and a slightly different pose, just to show you the, the range of movement possible allowed from the magnets and uh, for those of you who were commenting on the last video that the the waist joint seemed a bit floppy um, I did not add more magnets to it all I had to do was add a uh, few little tiny squares of 200 grit sandpaper into the ball joint and that grip gave enough for the the waist to be uh, posable and solid so I can pose it wherever I wanted but uh, anyway, with that, we'll bring this video to a close. This was about a two-week project. Um, it's a big item, fairly simple to do if you have an airbrush. Um, that's where an airbrush really shines, one large model such as this. And um, overall pleased, really, really happy about the enamel wash uh, through the airbrush technique that I discovered. Um, and you're going to be seeing a lot more of that in future videos. But until next time, as always, thanks for watching.